Hello, Jose. It's uh, amazing to have uh, such a famous lecturer from Udemy at DSC uh, Europe 2022. Uh, you have a bachelor's and a master's in mechanical engineering from Santa Clara uh, University, and then years of experience as an instructor in data science, machine learning, and Python programming. And currently you're working as the head of data science at Perian uh, Training, mm -hmm. uh, as well as providing in-person data science tutorials. So could you tell us a bit about your development path and how you moved from mechanical engineering to data science and AI? Yeah, so um, I did my undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering and then a graduate degree in thermofluidic engineering where my thesis was on uh, developing a micro pump to deliver medicine to mice. And then as part of that, you know, we had to develop some software to measure the flow rate. So a big part of that was computational fluid dynamics. And then that's where I started to learn the basics of programming a little bit. It was, it was actually in MATLAB. Um, and then in my first job out of uh, my graduate degree, I was working at a startup um, in Berkeley, at the Berkeley National Lab. Um, so it was right behind the university and it was like a federally funded lab. And then uh, we were doing things that required like Python libraries. So that's where I started to learn how to program Python. And then I was actually sitting next to um, a guy named uh, Edward Barnard, who super smart guy, uh, went to MIT and Stanford. And his thesis advisor was um, Stephen Chu who's like the Nobel Prize winner, and he used to be the director, I think, of the energy department. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm like next to the super smart guy, and he's like teaching me how to you know, program in Python. And then I realized, oh, I actually like these aspects of my job a lot better than the mechanical engineering aspects, because we were just doing like mixing uh, metallic pastes all day and testing them. And I was like, oh, the software, you know, it's a lot easier to get uh, feedback very quickly from developing software versus developing physical things. And then I decided, oh, well, I'll try to switch careers into this, and then I'll make a, a course on Udemy to show employers, like, oh, I actually know how to program in these libraries. Um, because if you looked at my resume at the time, it was, you know, it looked like a mechanical engineer, not like a data scientist. So then I, I make that first course on Udemy, um, like learning how to use Python for data analysis and visualization. And then it actually gets starts getting really popular. Um, and then Udemy asked me to make another course in Python, so then I make that course. And then all of a sudden, you know, the courses are having enough students. I was like, oh, I think this is actually going to be my full-time job. And this was like back in early 2015. And then it kind of just snowballed from there. Oh, uh, well, you actually uh, went into my second question, which is how you came to be an idea to a lecturer at Udemy. And what are some of the, let's say, opportunities provided to you now that you did uh, as a lecturer at Udemy? Opportunities provided to me? Yeah. Oh, well, gosh, it's been crazy. Um, uh, a lot of people, a lot of like uh, people working at a corporation reaching out to me uh, to conduct um, corporate training. That's probably the biggest thing. So, or, and I was like traveling to conferences like this too. I think that's a big part of it. Um, things that I, you know, never thought I'd be doing, whatever, like uh, pre data science me. Um, so, yeah, the opportunities to speak at conferences and conduct corporate trainings, I think, have been the biggest um, things. And also just to meet like students all over the place. Like, I just met three students of mine here in Serbia, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh and as someone who has been at the forefront of this online educational model, mm -hmm. uh, how can you tell us more about creating the future educational model and what, how would you go about it? Yeah, so like a big thing we do at our company, um, and I, I think a big driver of this was the pandemic, where everything just had to switch uh, virtual, um, including like enterprise training, where previously before the pandemic, enterprise training, the most popular way of doing it was just you hire an instructor, they come on site, which means they teach eight to 10 people, those eight to 10 people have to figure out, you know, the three to four days that they can all take off at the same time. Um, so scheduling is a bit of a nightmare there. And then once they come in, they have to fly to that physical location, teach them. And then post pandemic, uh, that kind of completely changed. Suddenly it's all over Zoom calls. Um, and so what we've tried to do at Perian Training, um, which is my company, uh, we've tried to combine the best of, you know, self-paced online learning with the best of instructor-led learning. So what we do is like a hybrid cohort model where, you know, you take those same eight to 10 employees who you were gonna do enterprise training for anyways, and then during the week, you let them watch the self-paced learning um, on their own time. So for some people, it will be 7 a.m., for others, it will be 7 p.m., and you, they can do it on their own schedule, so you no longer need to worry about grabbing these people's schedules. And then once a week, they get to meet with like an expert uh, in their field who happens to practice data science. So if we're working with like a, an insurance company, you know, we get a data scientist uh, from an insurance company to then meet with them like once a week, and they basically have their own private office hours where they get the 
kind of hands-on touch of an instructor with the flexibility of you know self-paced online learning. Uh, um... And um, what new technologies do you think will support scalability in education? Um, I, well, I, it's funny, I just gave the talk on this. I think the, the large language models, so things like GPT-3 mm -hmm. um, and Galactica, which is another one that was just released like last week by Meta Platforms, uh, I think we should expect to see those uh, have the largest effects on education. Um, so for example, Right now, you have the OpenAI model Codex, which was trained on a lot of a bunch of GitHub repositories. Then the product from that is GitHub Copilot. So right now, you can open up Visual Studio Code, subscribe to GitHub Copilot, and it will auto-complete your code. So you just ask for a comment of, um, "Can you write a function that does X, Y, Z?" and it will, you know, attempt to write that function for you. And then I think in the future, uh, we've seen more and more of these large language models start to become more information and explanatory based. So in the future, you're going to open up your code editor. Um, and you're going to ask it, can you write some code that does this for me? And also, can you explain what this line of code is doing? Or maybe you're looking at your colleague's code. Um, and so the large language model itself, AI, is going to become like your own personalized uh, tutor. You can ask any question at any time. Uh, well, thank you for those insights. And some, uh, someone who's at the conference for the first time, what would be um, your message for someone who hasn't been here but is thinking about coming to Data Science Conference Europe? Uh, I would say come. <laughs> it's a great place to um, network and get an understanding of the scope of the field. I think sometimes that can be kind of intimidating to beginners, is that data science and machine learning, it's such a wide-ranging field that can be applied to so many industries. Um, if you're a total newcomer, uh, it's sometimes confusing, like, where do you start or how do you get an understanding of the entire scope? And so coming to a conference like this where you get to see a variety of different talks um, kind of helps bring an understanding of uh, the scope of the field, so then you can decide what next steps to take, as well as like network of people. All right, thank you, thank you for joining our conference. Thank you for talking. I do hope you've enjoyed your time thank uh, you. here great. in Belgrade. Yeah, I've had a great time. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the Data Science Conference. My name is Jose Portilla. I'm the head of data science at Perian Training. Let's change the world through data.